Well, that was incredible. Good afternoon and welcome to London. Our plans did not go the way we thought they were going to. We were supposed to get here yesterday. Today we had a Harry Potter Studios tour and unfortunately it's booked out for months so we couldn't reschedule it. We flew Air Canada. There was a connection with another Air Canada flight. They came in late and our flight left without us so they put us on a flight the next day or the next night and uh we got here a little bit late and we were gonna try we were gonna try so hard because we landed we were supposed to land at 6 30 a.m we were gonna try to get to our harry potter tour at 9 a.m and unfortunately air canada did not put our luggage on our plane so <laughs> we did not make it in time but luckily we have our luggage we're safe we're here that's all that matters so we're gonna find other fun things to do today we've already decided to turn everything into a positive so it's gonna be a great day and a great time for us to spend together so let's head out into the city i will see you out in the city We're passing Westminster Abbey where there's gonna be a coronation in a couple of days. Unfortunately, we're leaving the day of the coronation, but it's the first one since 1953. So everyone's hyped on this right now. sure this place is here because a lot of tourists are gonna go in there the and move. it was not the move um, honestly it started kind of good but we need tartar sauce we did not realize that only restaurants have tartar sauce and little fish and chip shops do not have tartar sauce so if you come here pro tip now we know that now I haven't even been to the White House yet, and I've been here. <laughs> early the next morning. Good morning! Today we have a tour of Stonehenge and I'm sure you've heard of Stonehenge but I want to tell you why it's so cool so take it away future Cassidy. Stonehenge is one of the most mysterious and impressive engineering masterpieces in the world. Dated at 2500 BC, 5,000 years ago, Stonehenge is older than the Great Pyramids and the invention of the wheel. No one knows exactly what this prehistoric marvel was used for, but some believe it was a religious site, others believed it was aligned with the stars to observe them, and some even believe it was made by aliens. We can't say exactly how they moved these colossal stones or what significance each one had, but we do know that we're extremely lucky to get up close and personal with all of this history and learn so much from the past. So that is where we're going today. We're very excited. We're gonna stop and get some breakfast first and then we're heading over. <laughs> We came back to our room to finish getting ready. We just had like hotel breakfast, which never really has any protein. So I took a banana to go and I think we're gonna end up going down to like a convenience store to maybe get some protein bars or something because this tour is long. It leaves at 11 a.m. and we get back at 9.30 p.m. In Rome, we always use the scooters and the bikes and everything like that. But here there are two reasons why we're not doing that. Number one is it's cold and obviously that's just gonna add wind to the situation. But number two is because they do drive on the opposite side of the road here and we're gonna get so confused. So we decided that the move is to get an Uber over to our pickup area instead of taking those. Who knows, we might end up taking them a little bit later, but now is not the time.
Now that we're here, I would go as far as to say that if you visit London, you have to come to Bath or you're doing yourself a disservice. It's wild. It looks like all of the things you see of London where you want to feel like you're back in time. But we're back in time. All right, we are heading into the Rowan Baths. Let's get it. Let's get it. This place is absolutely wild. So they've got these different Rowan statues. And then this is where they used to bathe. They believed it was healing water because it has sulfur and iron in it. And at one point it healed leprosy, it healed warts, things like that. So the Romans came here in 43 and they built the largest bathing facility outside of Italy. And it, it is large. This is bigger than any swimming pool I've ever seen. So it may look like we're up high right now, but when the Romans built this, that was ground level. Now this is ground level and that's underground to us. This level that we're on right now was built in 1897. I'm reading that straight off of this right now. So I got the year right. There used to be a ceiling over the baths, but they took it off because obviously this is ground level to look down. So they believe the bath looked like this in the fourth century. There's the part that we were at. They used to put messages to the gods in the springs, including curses or something like that. A lot of these are curses, just lists of names, very Arya Stark-like. Along with curses and messages for the gods, people would also throw coins into the spring, and they believe that this is where the tradition of throwing coins into fountains came from. Who knew? But this is a part of how they used to build this whole place. They used hemp ropes and different pulleys to make things a little bit easier to maneuver, but they're really, really heavy. So the reason that this one's harder than this one is because of the pulley system. You have a single versus a double pulley. They're the same weight, but this one's way easier to pull than this one. Did they use both? I mean, that's what they started with, and then they came up with that. Watching the way they make everything is just wild to me because it's already been wild everywhere we've been, but now seeing it from the start to the end, it's even crazier. How were they able to get so precise with detail when they're using just like a hammer or something? I don't get it. So this one's the main bath, and just imagine like a bunch of people hanging out inside the water together. This is the hot room. It was used like a sauna. They used to light a fire in there, maybe one over there, and it would make it all fill with steam and be nice and hot. Right outside of this, it's really dark, but is the cold room where they have the cold bath. And then the one that we saw earlier is the hot springs. I love all the projections and things that they have here to really kind of put you in the place of what it used to look like. This one's really cool because it disappears and it shows you then versus now. Every time I come to places like this, I always just want to like sit down with a book. I don't even read books, but I want to sit down with a book and just spend time here. Because like even just sitting right here, it's like, how many thousands of years of history have happened on these steps? And I'm just sitting here, just a girl. Yeah. This is kind of wild to see. This is gonna sound so stupid, but I don't know. I never thought about people in the ancient times really working out and their workouts are a lot like ours are today, which I don't know why I didn't expect that. There's so much more to see here. And although I am not a historian, I tried my best to relay a little bit of the information that I'm learning as we're here. I just feel like you have to come here to experience everything. You can't really just take it from me. Well, that was incredible. They really wanted you to taste the bath water. It was not tasty, but it was, you got to try it while you're there. Now we're going to be heading over to Stonehenge from here, right? Stonehenge. We're on the bus to actually head over to the stones. Only 30 people are allowed in there at a time, so we're very special, and all of the other tours had to leave before we got here. I'll link the tour down below if you're interested, because so far, very exciting. I'm so excited to get in there. You cannot touch the stones for many reasons, so that will be happening. Even if you accidentally touch one, you have to let them know so they can make sure everything's all okay. We made it. We're going in very soon. Also, something our tour guide let us know is that the ground's not even, but the circle is. If you notice the people behind me, there's always an archaeologist watching at all times, and they're watching how you interact with the stones. They want to see which one you find the most attractive, which one you're taking the most pictures with. So even when you come here, you're a part of the study. 
like most ancient things, Stonehenge is built to line up with the sun. So on this end, you've got a stone that lines up with the March equinox, and then on this end, you've got a stone that lines up with the summer equinox. For reference on size of these stones, I would say they're about three Jameses tall and about five Jameses thick. Maybe 10 Jameses if you go the other. It's a lot of Jameses thick. We've decided that we feel like you have to go on the inner circle tour. If you just come here, it's great and it's cool, but you're gonna be like, I came all this way to just look at these. We wanna go inside, we wanna feel the energy. If you come here without this tour, you're not even gonna get this close. I'm in Stonehenge right now. I repeat, I am inside of Stonehenge right now. <laughs> We've literally just been wandering around not saying a word because we're just like, oh. right behind me is a good example of how they built this. That little spiky thing that looks like it's on top. They built these grooves so that when they put these parts on, they put holes in them. So they go on there and they stay on there perfectly. They were just explaining to us that the graffiti you see right here is more modern graffiti, maybe hundreds of years old. The graffiti down here is from the Bronze Age, thousands of years old. A couple people in our tour just mentioned aliens, so I guess I should talk about that a little bit. Some people do believe that Stonehenge may have been built like aliens, just like they believe that later in history, the pyramids in Egypt were built by aliens. There is some staff here that said there was a UFO sighting about two years ago during COVID, and I'm like, hmm, no people here all of a sudden? They come back for Stonehenge? I don't know. Whether that's true or not, still pretty fun to think about. And I guess there is a tour guide that does show up here in an alien mask every once in a while, so that's kind of hilarious. We're about to head out of here and I am not happy about it because once again, another place that I just want to sit all day and just be around the whole time. We found a magnet. Usually they closed five minutes ago, but they stayed open for us. So we're trying to just get in, get out, get it done. And it's so, so many cool things in here. Stonehenge home. We got this little baby Stonehenge for our shelves. And then we got a build your own Stonehenge also for our shelves and a magnet. We've decided we're collecting magnets at all the places that we go. So we got a bunch in Greece and Rome and now we're getting one from Stonehenge. So behind me is how they believe they moved the sarsen stones. Uh, some people believe it was the aliens, but the person in our tour just said that and I thought it was hilarious. And then these are the houses that they used to live in during the time of building Stonehenge. They're replicas, not the real ones, but still really cool to see. Now we're making a stop in Laycock so that we can have some dinner. This is actually where some of Harry Potter was filmed. Thanks to Air Canada, we didn't make it to our Harry Potter tour, but we're still getting a little taste of Harry Potter and that's all that matters. The inn we just ate at was established in 1361. And the pictures that I was trying to show you, they weren't the best quality. We're showing Harry and Dumbledore just kind of walking down the street. Apparently some fans were hanging out nearby, so they came out and signed autographs for them and things like that. Which movie was it during that they were filming here? Half-Blood Prince. We are completely blindly guessing what we think this is the Abbey. We have no idea, but the Abbey here was where a lot of the internal shots were filmed for heart. Hogwarts? Hogwarts. James just pulled up a couple of pictures of what is inside the Abbey that they filmed in. James Potter's house, Babington Holmes, or Slughorn's hideaway. That's it. Our tour is finished and we decided to walk home. It's like an hour walk, but we're down. And we stopped at McDonald's. We got a little baby fry and they have so many menu options we don't have. So we got a sweet chili wrap. It's a crispy chicken wrap, pretty much. They had a garlic mayo wrap, they have a chicken Big Mac, they have, what else did they have that was wild? Cadbury cream um, McFlurry. A chicken 
McSpicy. Chicken McSpicy. A whole they had bunch a, of like vegan and vegetarian, like a McPlant had, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, they had a McPlant, they had plant like strips, and they also had um, like a steakhouse burger with garlic aioli. So honestly, America, step up your game. We made it safe and sound after that long walk, which was honestly really nice. And now we're just gonna shower and get ready for bed for a little bit of a free day tomorrow. From there, we're going to Paris. So not sure where I'm gonna see you next. I'm definitely gonna take you on all of our adventures with us. So I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to like the video or leave us a comment as well. Let us know if you've been here or if you wanna come here and what you wanna see. Maybe we will catch that comment and make sure that we do these things in the future. We're definitely coming back after missing our tour. So let us know what you wanna see next time we're here and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.